Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Samuel Adams Returns. Those anti-federalists, if you haven't figured it by now, it's uh, truly, truly, uh, they got it right. And this is Tom Novolis, your host, and I am so delighted that you are here with me again this week as uh, we're going to go through a number of issues that all tie back once again to what our founders looked at as a moral and virtuous people. What really prompted this program more than anything in my studies this week was part of last week's uh, constitutional classes as we were trying to go through that question that I posed last week once again is that can you legislate morality? And we answered that very simply as yes. But, you know, when you start to look at the extensibility of that and, and you're looking at then when you have those what we would qualify as immoral leaders operating in all of the isms of our present day and age, Everybody wants to jump back and jump into the whole conversation about, well, you know, wh what can we do? Why can't we stand on what is constitutionally sound? So what I wanted to do today was look at a number of, as I was trying to sort through, and when I started that as I want to look at a number of, I want to look at a number of possibilities or at least start scratching the surface as to how do we get politicians to and bureaucrats, right? politicians and bureaucrats both to take and understand that they are violators, moral violators of their oath. And that doesn't mean that they're moral. They're actually immoral because they're violating their oath, and they will stand in judgment as we, we looked at before God. And that comes especially for those that understand the Westminster Confession that is clear in there on what it is about an oath breaker and an oath keeper on taking an oath. I'll include that in the, um, or it was, now that I think about it, it is included in, in your notes of, of the program. But as I was trying to figure out, okay, now we have Fauci Gate. We have everything that came out, Fauci Gate this, Fauci Gate that. And I'm going to really do a, a, a really gross, disgusting um, view of some of the things that the National Institute of Health are involved in. And, and Fauci's portion of that is uh, helping fund maybe in the second segment. It's about taking uh, aborted babies' skulls and placing them on animals for scientific research. So give you a heads up, you may want to listen, especially those on Soaring Eagle may want to go back and listen to that second segment because that's where I'll, I'll bring that out. But what I was interested in, based on all of this and based on all of the uh, actions that all these different governors have been taking, is there any recourse for the citizenry? Is there a mechanism on standing uh, in true constitutionalism that the state legislators can take and act upon? But man, I'm telling you, the, if, if the bottom line is if a, a legislator is not a moral being in understanding the laws of nature and nature's God, the God of the universe, and those concrete laws of his, then it, it is what it is. I mean, it goes back to what we said about Madison and John Adams in particular about this constitution is for a moral and virtuous or a moral and religious people. So with all that said, let's kind of dive in here on something on public health law. It's a public health law map, 
and it's in the uh, biotech law that references in your uh, back there at Samuel, look again, uh, for those that can see it on, on video, is that it's at samueladamsreturns.net for today's program. And that's where we're going to start with is this public health law map. And it's called, the section here is on liability for violating the state constitution. And these are liabilities on international actions. And I mean, the, all this stuff that public health law is trying to go through, especially in this biotech research world. So this couple paragraphs here is the U.S. Constitution acts as a minimum guarantee of certain rights upon which no law can impinge, but states are free to extend those rights further than the federal Constitution demands. When a state extends greater protections, in the state constitution than the federal constitution requires, what remedy is available for a violation of that state constitution, but not the federal constitution? Courts have the power to strike laws that violate a state constitution, and if laws violate the federal constitution, it can be challenged through a 42 U.S.C. 1983 action. But if the state constitution grants greater protections than the federal constitution, is there a federal remedy available? Now you have to understand in this paragraph and in this section, it doesn't have anything to do with our individual rights. This is primarily for health care biotech in looking at how the law functions if they are doing something within the context of a state, which we'll get into because of the research at the University of Pittsburgh that we're going to talk about in Section 2, or actually Segment 2 uh, of the program. So this one goes on seemingly if there is no federal violation, there can be no federal remedy, and the courts can impose only state relief possibly under the State Tort Claims Act, and strike the law as a violation of the state constitution. To illustrate, the state of Washington enacted a statute authorizing a program of collecting DNA samples from convicted felons. While this law does not violate the U.S. Constitution's Fourth Amendment guarantee against unlawful searches, and it goes through the court case, the state's constitution provides for greater protection than the federal. State versus Jones, 45 P3D, 1062, Washington, 2002. In this example, Washington courts have not yet ruled on the validity of the law under the state constitution. However, the mechanism for challenging the validity of such a statute is a challenge under the state constitution, and depending upon state law, a tort claim. If there is no violation of the federal law or constitutional provisions, there is no federal remedy. Now, a lot of this site was done in and last updated in 2009, so I'm sure if we go back and look at that Washington state case, it has been adjudicated by this period in time. The critical aspect of this question then begs, uh, where does, and this is, this is the greater question that we have to look at, and I don't believe attorneys will even want to consider any of this for the simple fact that attorneys are part of a bar association. The bar association in most states is extremely liberal, and therefore they don't want to question certain laws, especially if the benefit of those laws or any actions in those laws become something that is, you know, they can make a buck off of, or they don't have to raise the issue and question the lawmakers. And thirdly, because the majority of them don't even know the state constitution and whether rights are violated or not. And that's, the, that's really the bigger question of the whole picture. So we're going to go real quick through here in these last five minutes because uh, there is a lot of issues here. There's uh, in Ballotpedia, 
preemption conflicts between state and local government. So when there's a, it goes through the hierarchy of preemptive activities that happen where state law can be used to preempt local ordinances, federal law can be used to preempt state law. This page and what they explain here focuses on the preemption of local ordinance by state law. So when ordinances are drafted, once again, it goes to what is state law? And I have to contend because when I look at two reviews here that are there in your archive where you can look at them in, in the promo and for the on the web page for today's program is that I found this redressing uh, deprivation of rights secured by state constitutions uh, from the Penn State Law Review, exceptionally well written. I think it's uh, really interesting in, in that one. And the other one that I want to kind of touch bases on here in the last couple minutes is out of Vanderbilt Law Review. And this one is titled The Constitutional Wrongs and Common Law Principles, The Case for the Recognition of State Constitutional Tort Actions Against State Governments. And I'm telling you, when you, you, you need to have the opportunity to dig in on this and, and we we'll, may come back to it in the third segment because I think it's going to become critical as we, in the third segment, go back and, and revisit the things that are happening with uh, Fauci Gate as well as then what we're going to talk about in the next um, segment in uh, that whole uh quagmire, if you will. Uh, one of the other points that I want to bring out here, and it's in your references that we just don't have time to delve into, but under the public health again, and this is the U.S. National Library of Medicine, National Institute of Health, of course, National Institute of Health, and this one is using gubernatorial executive orders to advance public health. And it's a whole report that was done back in 2013, okay, 2013. And so I, I, that's where you wonder where that collusion, where's all the money? And this is NIH, once again, that has funded all of this stuff and how it is placed there. And, well, how, you know, what does that mean? So they're always looking at the so-called law and how they can either use the law or how they can get others to use the law, especially in the cases of executive orders, as we had seen significantly used uh, here in the United States because of the COVID debacle. I, I just want to refer, and you're going to have to go to the references because we just don't have the time to go to the original source documents that talk about the morality of those that you know are in medicine, are in uh, law, are in all of the aspects of what we're talking about. When we go in and we we start looking at these things, it, you know, it gives me a headache at times because it all comes down to once again, what is the source of a person's so-called morality, or is it that they just have mores? Is it that they find that, as we're going to talk about in a Federalist article, the, that the, the greater good uh, allows for all of these things? The greater good is what the law, therefore, says. The greater good. And I got to tell you, that's isn't that kind of what uh, Hitler and his crowd talked about, the greater good? Uh, isn't that what happened in, especially under Stalin and the experimentation in uh, mental health experimentation and psychology and all of that? Wasn't that for the greater good? And where is the greater good? I'm going to tee it up, especially for the third, you know, second and third segment. How is the greater good allowed to use immorality? 
Sam Adams and the Anti-Federalists wouldn't have gone for that. Come on back in the next segment. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the second segment of Samuel Adams Returns. Those Anti-Federalists, they did. They got it right. And yes, once again, this is Tom Navolis. I'm still here and I'm still your host. And as always, I have to thank Liberty Works Radio Network for uh, hosting us on the three different time slots that they do on Saturdays. Greatly appreciate everything that is happening on and at the network. And once again, as always, I do. This segment is to say, hey, go out there and check everybody else out. Check out all that other programming. And most importantly, please go and find that donate button because this is a listener funded network and we need you to participate as uh, you should. So, you know, go ahead and find that. Now, I have to take that deep sigh, deep breath, and um, we're going to get into something that is um, disgusting. This is uh, a, I'm, I'm going to stay, as you saw, those that received the promo of the program, you see the whole list of the Federalist articles that I think are absolutely tied and pertinent because, as you know, and a, as I have been looking at the relief in the courts through the constitutions versus the revised code versus uh, other legislative power, and how do we hold uh, bureaucrats and the elected accountable to our state constitutions as well as then, um, you know, the federal it's lost in my mind right now until we can get our election system, so on and so forth, fixed. But I referenced before a program that I did on the religion in Washington, D.C., and that religion goes all the way down through the various states. And that religion is proven by this article that uh, I am going to quote to you that was written in June 8th of 2021 from a Sumatra uh, Metra. He's the author, and it's entitled, The Left's Religious Faith is False, quote, Science, and quote, Echo Soviet Corruption. And we've seen that for a long time, and, I, and I, there were things that I always question in my mind when I attended different DARPA tech uh, conferences, and DARPA is the what Defense Advanced Research yeah, Agency. It's called Program Agency. That's the P in there. You can go look it up, DARPA. And they do all sorts of stuff. And you can look at whatever it is in their research and how it all ties into all of these other bureaucratic entities. So the problem we have is that so-called science now is the religion. And I think this article does a, a very interesting uh, perspective on that, and that these um, the, the worship of elite experts is under-analyzed aspect of the sorry saga. And we talked about a, a long time ago, Thomas Sowell in his book, Intellectuals and Society, it all kind of renders down into that whole thing. And that, you know, Fauci's been a part of this for a long time. So now you're hearing Fauci spew out there that, you know, the attacks on him aren't attacks on him, but they're attacks on science itself. Well, how about it being an attack on the false religion? How about it being an attack on everything that is against God, okay? And, and go, you go, Tom, what are you talking about? You know, science is good, all of that. No, I'm going to tell you right now, these bureaucrats are so self-serving, it, it, it's you can't comprehend it, okay? They think they're doing all the glorious and wonderful things for humanity at your tax dollar, and you have to understand that some of these scientists, they're not just scientists, but they're also the people that are plugged into these universities 
Because the way that programs work is a lot of these government employees are also employees of different universities. I know that for a fact. And it happens on a contractual basis a lot of times on what university or, or what company. Is it the RAND Corporation? Is it this university? Is it this corporation that actually gets contracts for X period of time to come in and work in those various agencies? So there's a lot there. So I would encourage you, first off, to go and look at the left's religious faith in false science echo Soviet corruption. Excellent, excellent article, and um, I don't want to belabor that anymore, but it goes to what I talked about in the New Atheism. It goes into all the isms. It goes into the religion of the federal government that is also the the ugliness that is at the state level. So the governors, the health departments, the bureaucrats in your states are of the same ilk. Otherwise, the governors in your state wouldn't have used the health departments the way that they did to take and corral you, to destroy lives, to have people die that didn't need to die you know, from a terrible flu as well as then those that lost all of their personal property, which is against the Constitution. So that's kind of where I was trying to go. But not to belabor this, but to get into the idea, again, an article there in The Federalist is grafting dead babies' scalps onto lab rats. Is that any better than child sacrifice? is the article's title. And in fact, what we're looking at here, it uh, comes out of, and this was on June 4th of 2021 that this article came out. And in a Newsweek editorial, editorial is kind of the lead in here from a David uh, Daladin. He reminds the public that the scientists at the University of Pittsburgh have been taking five-month-old aborted fetuses, infants, okay, aborted infants, five-month-old aborted infants. So you got to understand the, the, the infant that was aborted is at five months old, cutting out their body parts and then grafting their scalps onto mice or otherwise harvesting organs for medical use or medical research. And, you know, you sit there and you go, what are you talking about? Well, I went in and I, I looked at some of the other stuff, an older article that was done actually only a month earlier, May 7th in 2021, where this article ties in University of Pittsburgh uses taxpayer-funded aborted babies for medical research. Well, the University of Pittsburgh says, you know, we're not doing that. We're collaborators with, you know, other people over elsewhere in Italy and other places, you know, we're not, we're, you know, we're not, we're not actually doing that here. But when you dig into these articles, you can find that in this one in particular, the one that I just quoted on University of Pittsburgh, uses taxpayer funded aborted babies for medical research. In that study, they're obtaining the at the age of 18 to 20 weeks they're from a terminated pregnancy they're using both the skin and the scalps and the backs of fetuses so they can compare grafts with and without hair and then they go on to talk about what that means in research around livers and uh, what what is that going on? And that's where they say, oh, no, 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 that, that liver research, we're not doing that. That's over in Italy. We collaborate with them. But then the whole point of this is, is that it is published articles, but when you really find the money flow, it is the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center that is helping to fund through, through, the National Institute of Health. And in conjunction through 
especially this one with the grafting of scalps onto mice and rats, because that's the title of the, of the work, is that, oh, well, you know what? Oh, we're not that, that you know. Uh, I don't know. Two things: where are you getting the the fetal tissue from, and then secondly, the baby scalps. Where are you getting those from? And there is a line. Believe it or not, they're buying it from Planned Parenthood. You know, it's a dotted line, but it's there. And so, what is that on a moral basis? And then, in addition to that, it is included from the grant from the money is that it rolls right back to Dr. Fauci and his what? His National Institute on what? Allergies and all of this nonsense. Well, you know, there's so much there, so much that is tied in on this whole thing with grafting human parts and organs into other animals for research. So I guess when I when I start getting onto it and we'll pick it up more in the third segment where's the morality? Where is and and you know there is none when it comes to planned parenthood. They are out to destroy that which is part of God's creation. And, you know, when you look at what that means, when is that human a being? It's not about the science. I'm studying something right now that's looking at it from a perspective of law and theology and how the law and theology matter when it comes into the whole concept of what it means to terminate a being in process, someone that is developing to that which God in his foreknowledge would put into effect for his purposes in all of humanity and creation. So the violations here are absolutely moral, but again, what we've seen because of the religions of atheism, communism, all the other isms, is that you know, God, biblical morality, do not matter. So they can do whatever they well please and utilize your tax money. So we have these bureaucrats that we're seeing, again, especially in the O Biden administration. But remember this. This is critical to remember that I don't care whether it's at the federal level where they did not get removed because they're career bureaucrats and they're almost impossible to remove out of the federal system, but even at the state system. Think about every agency that is there at the state level that almost mirrors that of the federal level. And that those bureaucrats, they take that oath of office, but that does not mean that they have the same moral definition of life, liberty, and the pursuit of property slash happiness that you have. In fact, the majority of them do not. They are only centered on their agency, they're centered on their own, I don't know, their own lust for the money to take and ensure that that agency has everything that it needs to survive, and the heck with your rights. They don't matter. The Constitution does not matter. And the lawmakers, they dance around it, and they fund all this immorality. Wow, I, you know, Sam Adams and the Anti-Federalists predicted it. They predicted very, very clearly that man is sinful, that man is not good in and of himself. That's flat out true. And if you think that man can be the salvation of medicine and all of that, you got another thing coming. I'm telling you, that's not where it's at. 
So the only way to do that is to have the same understanding that Sam did is from that biblical Reformation perspective. And come on back in the third segment as we pick up on Fauci Gate. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this third segment. Yeah, this is Tom Novolis. This is Samuel Adams Returns, the Anti-Federalist. Got it right. And I'm disturbed. In, in the fact that, once again, it goes to uh, all of these pulpits that should have been raising the alarm of morality in science, in religion itself, Christianity itself, politics, family, education. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, I've talked about it a number of different times. One of the links there in, in SamuelAdamsReturns.net is to a, um, a blogcast that uh, Doug Wilson did uh, this past week. Just, you know, go in there. Uh, the, the link will be in here in this third segment. Go check that out. Um, and uh, I think that's important. And by the way, my Screaming Eagle friends, I didn't jump in in an excited manner to welcome you back because um, you need to go listen to that second segment. There, there's things in there that if you're not jumping up and down, and if you're not taking and wanting to go and act at the state level, at your county level, then I, I don't know what I can I don't know what I can do to encourage you other than say, you know, God have mercy on all of us for our inaction and in allowing evil to persist to the extent that it has. Okay, with that. I do want to uh, go back, and I, I, I don't want to get into what I just said, but I do want to make a note here is that you need to go and look at the other article the, about child sacrifice in Uganda, as well as child sacrifice in South Africa. Those are listed in the uh, links in the one program that I identify, or not program, but the article in the Federalist that I identify for you because I think it's um, it's really sickening on that and uh, you need to look into it because I, I, it, to me you know this is this is the whole thing with what's that guy that was uh, so-called murdered in his cell uh, because of uh, Epstein Island so Epstein and you look at the Clintons and you look at all of these other potential people that are now having nothing done with them or to them because it continues as a federal cover-up. But you know what? It's going on. Same thing in Uganda. And you need to understand that those of the Clinton ilk and everybody else are of the same nature, of the same evil, and uh, doing the same stuff, but we allow it. Yeah, we allow it. That's okay. That's okay. We allow all that research because you know what? We want to understand uh, the cancer research, the tissue research, the pathology of it all. We want to know that for the good of mankind, that we can spend trillions of dollars and never come up with an answer because otherwise, how would all these scientists and all of these uh, you know, medical people and all these universities, where in the world would they get their money from if all these things really came down to being cured? Hmm. Anyway, not to belabor that one, but again, go to SamuelAdamsReturns.net and look at all of what I have for you there. Now, I have been in search of how do we, the people, take and secure our rights 
under all that has been happening, especially with Fauci Gate. I mean, there's a lot of us that have called everything that Fauci was spewing and what we were seeing, you know, and how I, I think Trump got trumped because of all of these medical experts. And as I noted or earlier in the religion of D.C. and the religion of the bureaucrats in your state, how do we restore, and it's all about restoration, our rights? What are the means and mechanisms? Because I'm telling you right now, the politicians, unless they become those moral entities as our founders expected to be, it's not going to happen. And we change, if not get rid of the laws, and that we have these moral legislators take and eradicate the bureaucrats because they're not moral, they're oath breakers. And until we get rid of the universities who are oath breakers and designers of the destruction of our nation, oh well, you know what? You're going to have this here article that was done on June 8th, this vaccine for kids. And here's an interesting point, is that amid the Fauci email scandal, poll shows Americans trust parents over the feds. And under this, there was a thousand likely voters who responded to a poll, which was conducted on June 3rd through the 6th. The responses uh, varied between parties with 82% uh, Republicans, 49.7% Democrats, and 59.4% of independents saying parents should decide if children should get the jab. But that's not what the article says. That's what I say. Only 5%, 5.7% of Republicans, 26.8% uh, Democrats, and 11.1% independents said that the federal government should decide. Boy, talk about whacked out people. But we know because it's the religion of science, and we know because of the socialists and the communists that are there, the Gramskyites in particular, that government is God. And those of the oligarchies that lead it know what's best for you and your children. All right, I don't want to take up too much time. Article's really good. Short talks on that. And then once again, I want to hit you is on that religion. Fauci is in there. You can see him talking in the picture of uh, talking to uh, Billy Boy and Elgar so that uh, it, it's just really, really interesting. But, you know, when we really get down to all of the information, you got to look at this article by Cato. Cato is anti-Trump, anti-you and me, or anti-really patriot. Cato is not an independent organization. They're a leftist group. But I got to tell you, interesting article. Do the state shutdowns violate the U.S. Constitution? Uh, where is it violating the Guarantee Clause? And what they start out with is that in, in the states like Michigan, Maryland, Virginia, and Kentucky have all ceased in recent weeks to be organized in the political terms as Republican form of government. So that's why I titled the program something to the effect that you know, uh, can the Constitution stand in the context of republicanism? Can we hold together as the individual states and the republic, or when do they become dictatorial, and what, what what's going on with them? I mean, this is a very, very interesting article. I, I think that they really slam on the populist corners of us in Trump land, as they say, and uh, they consider that the lawsuits against the governors, are, they count them as flawed lawsuits, and they go through that various reasoning. And so you're going to have to look that up for you know, within, you know, I'm down to five minutes, but I think that that's something you need to look at. And then from Zero Hedge, which I like that because they look at a lot of the financial stuff. I like Zero Hedge for a lot of different reasons. But... Uh, this uh, 
the whole issue and article was originally authored by uh, through the Ron Paul Institute by a Nebojsa Malik and talking about Anthony Fauci in the response to Fauci's emails proves everything is fake. Narrative management, Trump's reality, and those in power want it that way, want to remain that way. I think it's really critical that you look at this article because, once again, the science is all manipulative based on the money. So I, I can go on a diatribe here for the next four minutes in that talking that, how, uh, you know, to me, I always said from the beginning that you can't trust Fauci. The moment he opened his mouth, if anybody had any ideas of going and doing a little bit of research on this guy, he is a highly paid bureaucrat that has no conscience or morality towards individual rights under constitutionalism. His whole thing is to go out there, and he doesn't care because, as one of the other articles points out, you know what, it's all about the greater good. He's willing to take the risks of working with communist, and I get down to the NIH, if you go back and you really look under the DARPA programs, you go back into the World War II era, up through when we had biological warfare treaties under, yes, the UN of all things, the NIH, and especially Fauci's organization, I'm stretching it here for you. You're going to have to dig deep. Have always been a part of, as he said, with the CDC down in Georgia in the deep, 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 deep labs that are door at the CDC where all the bio stuff is held still, the root sources of it. Uh, why not get the communists to do the bio research for bio warfare? And if you're taking and you're looking at the collusion between the Gates Foundation, the, the Gates himself, and all of the other money, Zuckerberg, and so on and so forth. Oh, wow. Yeah, let's you know do a little bit more work with the Chinese and see what we can do. So that kind of brings me back in so many different ways is that, you know, even in the voting. Here is under the Gateway Pundit, Facebook and Smartmatic executives conspired together before the 2020 election and many of the same officials now trying to stop or derail 2020 election audits. I think I brought that up to you before, but I wanted to re-mention that to you. Go look at those reports. But then when we take and we draw back in these last two minutes, here's the challenge for you. Here's the challenge for me. How do we restore our constitutional rights within our states, restore federalism in its functional manner in such a way that we take and hold these bureaucrats in particular, as well as the politicians, responsible in everything they do? Because right now we don't. We let them get away whatever they want to do. And we see that in every aspect of education, medicine, medical research, so on and so forth. They do whatever they want, and they chase every dollar to do it. And they dole out money to foreign nations, whether by treaty or without treaty, under grants to take and research things that are blatantly, and in my opinion, because my morality tries to follow God's morality, and when I look at that, it becomes evident that uh, we have problems with the phone. <laughs> Sorry about that. But it actually becomes evident in these last few sections that uh, there is no morality except the frivolous, ungodly morality that science and intellectualism takes and overrides all that our founders 
had established. But it goes down to, yep, John Adams and Madison. This Constitution, which includes federalism, is only for a moral and virtuous people. That's what we need. Come on back next week when Sam Adams returns and those anti-federalists, absolutely, they did. They got it right.